Here's Beagle Point. We're getting really close to it, but uh, the star density is such shit. And um, the goal is to get there without jumping to any star that is not non-fuel scoopable, and that's very difficult. So I've been zigzagging and weaving around here, trying to make that magic happen. Inching a little bit closer at a time. Plotting route now. We're barely going anyway. See, look at that. Look at that loop. Look at that chain of amino acids. Look at those peptide bonds, guys. Looping around like that. This is the kind of crap you have to put up with when you're trying to get to Beagle Point. That's just to get that distance. Oh my god. And will this even get me closer to Beagle Point? I don't know. Barely. I might have to go back and go a completely different way. But we're gonna try. 29 jumps to go the distance of pretty much one jump. Engage. Here we are. One jump to our destination. Beagle Point. It's only going to take us 58 more days to get there. So um, I was able to get here without ever jumping to a non-fuel scoopable star, even through the abyss and uh, beyond, with a 34 light year jumping asp. So if you were worrying about having to jump through star fields that you couldn't fuel scoop, um, you don't have to worry if you have a 34 light year jumping asp, because I have just done it again. And that star that I was snaking to, well, it snaked just around this way and down under and over here. It was smooth sailings past that point. Here we are, the final jump. To big O point. Third time coming here. First time on PC. Tetco, do the honors. Sure thing. Friendship drive charging. Four, three, two, one. Engage. And here we are. Beagle point. Fuel scooping. Fuel scooping complete. How much you want to bet there's a bunch of damn fleet carriers here? Well, there's four. I, don't, I honestly thought there'd be more. And we'll go see the tourist beacon, huh? Eh? No, there's a tourist beacon on the dang star, apparently. Flying directly at a star is unnerving, especially when it's so goddamn bright. This damn thing better not be straddling the exclusion zone or I'm gonna be pissed. Oof. It's a bright boy. There it is. Oh, and uh, NPC ships are loading in too, because why not? Oh. It's a bulletin on Distance Worlds 2. Ambitious five-month expedition to the far outer rim. It launched at the Polanyi system. The purpose of the expedition was to unravel the mysteries of the galaxy and to construct a starport at Sagittarius A star. This beacon marks the final Distance Worlds rendezvous point, which was visited by 3,747 commanders during the expedition. And I was one of them. That would be 3,746 if I didn't go. Zai the Beagle was the epitome of the phrase man's best friend. I need to map this planet. I'm pretty sure it's Beagle Point 2 was the final destination since it's the one with the memorial. Surface scan complete. I remember I landed in a pretty big crater. Now you might be asking, what's so special about Beagle Point? Well, not a whole lot. It's rice here. It's actually a pretty boring system, all things considered. But it was his stopping point, Commander Kamsel, and he was one of the first to come out this far, and he was the first to really identify a system as a point of reference to go far to. This just became the de facto system. The very first ever time that I'm actually setting foot in Beagle Point. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. I came all the way here, 65,000 light years, for this rock right here. This shot, guys. Me and this rock. This is what it was all about, guys. Now I can finally die in peace. Okay, there's actually a crater here on Beagle Point called Legacy Crater. That was probably the crater I was thinking of earlier. It was the actual ending point for Distance Worlds 2. Problem with that is I have to find the crater, which means I have to do the thing I hate doing the most, which is use latitude longitude. Ugh. Let me get significantly above the dropout and then I can loop around this planet using the latitude and longitude coordinates and find this legacy crater. Nope. Going the wrong way. This is the right way that way. Okay, so it's basically on the other side of the damn fucking planet. I hate this sh I'm still climbing that way. I think it's down this way more. No, oh, on upsy daisy. You can't I can't make out shit on this. Is that legacy crater? Sure fucking is. We found it. To really complete a journey to Beagle Point, you're technically supposed to land in this crater. So, let's get that done. It's not a bad looking crater, to be honest. I like this little plateau amidst the crater here. Landing complete. Grab my SRV a little bit, so I can say I drove my SRV in Legacy Crater. Now, a lot of people have uh, gone to Beagle Point, but how many people have gone to Beagle Point on console and PC? 
Eh? I'm joining a new special exclusive club. I'm a renaissance man. There we go. Setting foot in Legacy Crater. Whee! Okay. I don't see any racks. So let's just get the hell out of here. See ya, crater. Oh my god, the crater is glowing green! That's nah, just my night vision. God, look how long it's taken me to just cross a little bit of this crater. As we leave the gravity of that planet, we must do another tradition that is targeting Sol. Or Alpha Centauri if you don't have Sol unlocked. There it is, guys. There's the money shot. Soul is 65,000 light years away. That's Earth. That's home. It's on the opposite side of the whole damn galaxy. And this is the shot that you had to have to prove that you went to Beagle Point. I should just stay out here. Never go back. What about me? God, do I have to factor you into every single decision I make? Oh, and you used to have to, like, get that in the screen and then... Soul on the screen up there, yeah, and then you could, then you could see, like, yeah, there you go. Commander Sepulchre Geist, and then you can see Soul up in the corner, 65,000 light years away. Under your codex, under your stats, under exploration, max distance from start, 65,222 light years. That's a stat every explorer has to have. But here comes the part. The big question everybody asks themselves when they come to Beagle Point or some other far distant destination. Should we fly all the way back home? Or should we self-destruct and teleport ourselves back home? Sort of exploiting the respawn system of the game. But before I go any further into that topic, I need to say, I don't care how the hell you play your game. It's your game, it's your experience, I'm not gonna judge you. You have your own time and your own lives going on. You know what you're looking to get out of the game. Whether you want to fly back or blow yourself up, that's up to you. You're no less of a commander if you blow yourself up here. But. I would like you to hear my point of view on the subject. Elite Dangerous, and there's a lot of things people love and hate about Elite Dangerous, but when you compare Elite Dangerous to its competition, games like No Man's Sky and Star Citizen, there's one area where Elite Dangerous always shines above the rest. Immersion. Now, it's a video game and people can nitpick any little thing. There's a billion immersion breaking things in any video game, this included, but this lends itself to immersion more than any other space exploration sim out there. Far more than No Man's Sky, and far more than Star Citizen at least. What Elite Dangerous has over its competition is this feeling of truly going out there, pushing yourself out super far away from civilization, getting lost in the infinite stars, and immersing yourself in the beautiful and gigantic galaxy. If I were to fly all the way to some distant point like Beagle Point, just to self-destruct and teleport back, that would be extremely immersion breaking. For me, in my opinion, it would cheapen the experience. And it would cheapen the experience of all further distant expeditions I do, because I know I can just exploit the self-destruct system and teleport back to the last station that I docked at. Or I can cut that out of my mind Never consider self-destruct or intentionally destroy myself as an option to teleport around the galaxy and truly sink into this immersion. So I'm going to fly back manually all the way back to Seoul. I will stop at Explorer's Anchorage on the way there. I helped build the damn thing after all. But I also won't use fleet carriers because this was a fleet carrier list expedition, kind of getting the feel of what it used to be like in the old days of Elite Dangerous, the vanilla days, manually doing everything. And that means manually risking my ship and my data. I could dock at one of the fleet carriers here. I could sell my data to them and secure it right now, secure my discoveries right now. Data is a lot of money, and it puts your name on your discoveries. If I died before I got my data back to a station, I'd lose all the credits. I'd lose all the discoveries with my name on them. Sans my first footfalls, I think those will stick. But now with fleet carriers, now they're here in Beagle Point. And I have options. I could go right here, and I can dock here, and I can sell my data, and then I can securely destroy myself and teleport all the way back to Explorer's Anchorage. Unless... Unless docking on a fleet carrier would set that as your spawn point. But I don't think it does. But I don't know. I don't care to look it up. But you can secure your data right here, right now. And no matter what happened, you would have your discoveries and your money. Now, selling your data to a fleet carrier, you lose a cut of the money. But not a whole lot. I could also repair my ship here and make it more likely that I get back safely. But again, back in the vanilla days of exploration, there were no such options. You had a choice. Do you destroy yourself and lose your data and teleport back and save a lot of time? Perhaps months of travel? Or do you hang on to your data and fly back manually like a man? And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to hang on to everything and fly back manually. 
I'm not going to sell my data here. I'm not going to repair my ship here. So while I still have this train of stars, I'm going to use it. And I'm going to unwind my path back to uh, Route 33. I'm going to take Route 33 back through to the Formorian frontier. I'm going to head straight on over to Sagittarius A star, where Explorer's Anchorage is. Continue my ass on all the way back home to the human bubble and soul. Now, back in the vanilla days, you didn't really have Explorer's Anchorage to stop at either, but you did have Colonia, at least back when I did it. I could stop at Colonia on the way back, but nah, I'm going to do Sagittarius A. See ya, Beagle Point. Oh, system information. Beagle Point marks the end point of a galaxy-spanning expedition undertaken by Commander Kamzol in 3301. They named it after his beloved Beagle Jack. I thought his Beagle's name was some... Zoll or I don't know, whatever. One year later, the system was chosen as the final destination of Distance Worlds. And that's all that's here. No racks, though. Okay, Tetco. Let's go home. Finally! Beagle Point's lame anyways. See ya, suckers! Thank you to my Patreon supporters, the Geist Wing Commanders, Commander Irish Love Circle, Dafted124, Lintwine, Scotty Dotty, Yuri Teraday, and ZZZZTXR, the Geist Cadets, Amy Hunter, Danny Taylor, Dave Sunday, Dreadnought CNV301, Fluffy Bunny1, Gaza Milldog, Hilo Mars, Mogbish, Robbie Campbell, Trocads, and Travis Warren. And our Geist recruits, 84 Bandwagon, Blood Butcher, David Lissell, Felchammer, It's Deer, Joe Osborne, Joshua Meserve Jr., Paul Calvin, Slave, and Texas T. Thank you, and until next time, cadets.